Hello everyone, it is Suzanne Hart here. Welcome to Mindset Mastery. We're just gonna wait a minute for a few people to join. We are talking about health, fitness, and wellness mastery, focusing more on health and fitness, uh, but it's that series. And we are gonna be talking about cardio versus strength training. It is the big question. We will see what everyone's doing and what everyone's thoughts are. If you can hear me, just say, yes, I can hear you. So I know I'm coming in loud and clear. You can see me, I'm, it all is good. Hi there, Tria, how, how are you? My girl, Miss Tria, can you hear me, hon? So we're just gonna wait a minute and have people, give a minute for people to join. This is one of my fun topics, fun for me, I don't know if it'll be fun for everybody else, but this is one of my fun, fun topics uh, because I'm always like, why is everybody on the treadmill, right? And so we're gonna answer the, the challenge, the question between treadmill, or weights, strength training. What do you do? Particularly if your goal is to lose weight, get into shape. I know a lot of women will say, I don't wanna get bulky, so I'm staying away from the weights. Thank you, Turia. Um, stay, staying away from the weights, so we're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna give you some insight to uh, what I've learned over the years, what I've been doing over the years, and what I've been doing with some of our challenge people. Hello, Cindy, how are you? Welcome. So we're talking about what I've been doing with some of, your, of my challenge people and the results they've been getting and why. And uh, so yeah, it's gonna be when we're talking about uh, that combination. Do you do a combination? Do you focus on just weights? Do you just get in the on the treadmill and run, run, run? So before we go, if you are here and uh, whether you're listening to the replay or whether you are here live, this this live, as, as I said, is called cardio versus uh, strength training. And uh, so what I'm going to ask you to do is if you First of all, share it to your to your personal page and bless some people. I'm also going to ask you to share it with five people. Why five? Because knowledge is absolutely power. And if you're here and you are you find this topic of value, which that's probably why you you tuned in, there's probably about five to six people in your world that are asking the same question. Cardio or strength training, what do I do? Well, we're gonna talk about what I've been doing, what I've been doing with some of my, my clients, my challenge members, and, and, and why it works, why we do this fun combination. Uh, we're gonna talk about why we work out for a very short period of time. Uh, we're gonna talk about not, non-stop training and, and why it works and why it gets kick butt, long-term, ever-evolving results. So uh, that is going to be the conversation. So yeah, so go ahead and share with five people. And it might be you have a group that you want this to get to. You might know a health and fitness group. And one of the things I really like to focus on is, is health and fitness for high producing entrepreneurs, business professionals who don't have a lot of time and often neglect themselves. So. How many of you have put your health on the back burner in the past because you're busy doing the do, making the money, and looked up one day and said, oh, this is not good? Or something has happened in your life and you've been focused on that, maybe focused somewhere else emotionally, and neglected yourself, and now you're getting back into it, right? And that's the reason I focus on that particular group because I know what it's like. I've been that person who's right in production mode, right in the grind of doing the work and forgot me. So this is about the, this is the reminder that you and I are the foundation for every single thing we do and our health, our fitness and our wellness are vital in that equation. And I say health, fitness and wellness because there are three distinct things in my world and, and I'll, I'll actually do a live on that so you really begin to get it. But today we're gonna focus on cardio versus a strength training. All right, so I am gonna jump right into it. So 
Why this conversation came about was I always tend to see, when I used to go to the gym, and, and if you know me, I haven't had a gym membership in about 10 years. And if I do have one, it's for a very short period of time. So I, I remember when I was a member at Hua Gym, that was my last gym. And uh, I was there for three months because it was summer and I wanted to do some squats and I wanted a little bit of heavier weights. Three months and I was out and I haven't had a gym membership since. And prior to that, I hadn't had a gym membership in probably about 10 years. Why? Because I believe your body's your gym. And I'm always on the move, always on the road. So I take my body, my gym with me, and that's what I use. The most weights I have in my house are 10 pounds, just to let you know, I don't own a treadmill. And uh, so you kind of got the answer to part of that question, right? Uh, so let's talk a little bit about it. And the reason this topic came to being was I would go to the gym when I did go to the gym and I would see how many of you see those, particularly women, who are on the treadmill and they're doing their 30 to 40, some 50, sometimes an hour on the treadmill. And they're they're either booking it or they're not, right? And those are usually the ones that tend to do the, the extreme limited diet and their goal is to drop some weight and they are probably losing weight, but they're actually not losing what they want to lose, which is body fat, right? And the goal with weight loss is to eliminate fat and hopefully hold on to your lean muscle mass. And if you're in my world, build lean muscle mass because building lean muscle mass increases your metabolism. So there's that group that there's that tribe. And then there's the other tribe who are the ones who go to the gym and they do the weights, right? And I love them because it's usually the guys and they are in the gym and they tend to lift the heavy, heavy weights. So they do a set, they sit, they rest, they check their phones, they check themselves out, they do all sorts of things. And then they go do another set. And, and then they'll do a little bit more and more often. And they will tend to put on a little bit of weight, a little bit of pounds, right? Lean muscle. And below their their you'll see the you'll see that they're putting on muscle, but they often have no definition. And the reason being is that their body fat percentage is way too high because they're actually not you know, doing the cardio and all, all those sorts of things. Then you got the group that do the yoga. And I think that's the best group actually all around. If you're going to choose something and you're going to stick to it, I think yoga um, is one of the best things to do uh, because it, 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 it works on your core. It works on some strength. It works on uh, a little bit of cardio. It's just a really good all around workout. I, however, think you should do a little bit of both. So the answer is weights versus cardio is both. So I did a survey in the Fit, Fab and Fulfill group. And if you're not a member, you wanna be a member because we drop great nuggets in there. We have awesome pulse, we provide great value. So I, I put this, this, um, this quiz in there and asked people what they did. Now, most people did yoga, right? That was the thing that they did. Some people did uh, weights, some people did cardio. Um, but what was the order? Yoga, walking, hit, weights, and no one did the treadmill or else no one would admit to doing the treadmill, right? And so that, that was the order of things. And that was kind of good because I was like, okay, people are beginning, beginning to get it. So let's talk about the balance and why. I truly believe that you need to do a little bit of everything, particularly as you get older. Your goal is to touch all of them. So you want to do some strength training. You definitely want to do some cardio. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to do strength training. You want to do some yoga and stretching. You want to do some core work. And those are the four when you're working out that are really key. And then if you're in my world, you want to do some plyometrics. And plyometrics is jumping one foot to the other because it works on your balance. It works on your on your um your your quick muscles it works on the eye hand coordination the body hand coordination all that sort of stuff right so you want to do a little bit of ply plyometrics so this is kind of how and why so the first thing is why the treadmill doesn't work the way most people think it does is that most people as we age we tend to lose our lean muscle right and uh so every year think about it you're losing a certain amount of lean muscle a certain percentage of lean muscle every single year as you age and when your lean muscle goes down 
So does your metabolism. Why? Because it takes energy to move muscle. It takes more energy to move lean muscle mass than it does to, to move fat. So if you're sedentary and you're not doing things to build muscle, you're losing that muscle. But if you're eating at the same rate you were when you were younger, you're probably putting on fat. Now, one of the misconceptions when people talk about strength training is that they think that when they stop, their, their lean muscle turns to fat. That is not the case because they're two different tissues, just saying. And however, your lean muscle may be replaced by fat because you're gaining more fat because you are losing muscle. Therefore, your metabolism slows down. Therefore, you gain fat. Right. It's, it's kind of like that. So one of the first things you want to do as you age is you want to continuously work to build lean muscle. In my mind, I'm always working to rebuild the muscle because I know I'm if I don't, I'm losing at a, a rate that I don't want to uh, as I age. And that's why people will put on 10 about 10. 10 pounds every every year or so because that's what's going on and the 10 pounds is not muscle mass often it's body fat so when you're building your muscle mass what you're doing is one is you're increasing your metabolism why because the more muscle you have to to move on your body the quicker your metabolism the more calories your body has to burn in order for it to move the more energy it requires to move it's that simple equation but this is the other thing um, one of the things when you start building muscle and you get more definition, I truly believe that you you look, you look sleeker, your arms have more shape, but they also look slimmer than they actually are. When I was competing, when I was in my fittest and really getting ready for a contest, I weighed a lot more than I looked, but I was lean. And so if you took the circumference of my leg, you would most people would be, be surprised at how big they actually were because they looked very lean, very slender, very long. But they were actually bigger than they were. Why? Because they didn't have much body fat on them. So muscle, when it's when it's the more definition you have, the more the leaner you tend to look, the more slender you tend to look. Now, for women, there is there is that 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 fine line but most women won't pass that fine line because we're just not built like that so one of the big questions is if i do weights will i will i get bulky not likely unless you use something to help you with that but we just don't have the hormones and stuff in in general to make that happen so you'll get you'll get defined you'll put on some muscle um, and you can actually begin to sculpt your body if you're doing the weights. But the key thing for me when you're when I'm doing weights is I can sculpt my body, I increase my metabolism, and I look I look smaller than I am than I am. So I weigh a lot more than I, I than I actually look. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, yes, you want to do cardio. You want to do cardio because cardio gets your heart rate up, so it's great for heart health. It gets your metabolism going as well. It gets you burning fat. But cardio in and of itself, if that's all you're doing, it's not going to have the same effect as if you combine it with strength training. Now, what, why cardio works is cardio has you move that lean muscle that you built. So it's, so now if you've put on a few pounds of lean muscle, think that you, it takes more energy to move that body. Therefore, you're burning more. And when you're, particularly when you're using the lower part of your body, those big muscles, your metabolism keeps working for an extended period of time. Now, I don't recommend just running at the same pace the whole time. I want you to think of soccer players, basketball players, um, any sport that has stop and start. They tend to stay the leanest. They tend to look strong. They tend to have great uh, balance and agility, but one of the really cool things is their cardio is really good. And it has a lot to do with that stop and start, right? So, so if you're not playing soccer, playing basketball, running tennis, this is my favorite thing to do, go into a backyard, find a hill, run up the hill, walk down, run up the hill, walk down, run up the hill, walk down. I've had videos of me doing it. It will be the best thing to decrease body fat, build your legs, decrease the weight around your hips. It'll help you in the best ways. When I was competing, 
when I wanted to shred, really to get definition in my legs, I would go to St. Joseph's Oratory. If you know, if you live in Montreal, you know exactly what that is. There's more stairs than you ever want to see. And I would run stairs for 30 minutes. My legs would be burning um, and it would lean me out because my big muscles, my legs were moving. And the act of running stairs is lifting your knees and running. I would run to one stair, two stairs at a time, all sorts of different things. But the thing was I'd run up and I'd walk down, then I'd run up some more and I'd have all these different paths that I would take because there were so many stairs, right? So one of the things, if you're gonna do cardio, I recommend that you do the cardio that is stop and start, right? And for me, you get to do it for a shorter period of time. So when I go run run hills, um, I run for about 10 to 15 minutes. I try to get 10 sets in. So up, back down, up, back down um, 10 times. I would recommend you start with like three to four, run up, walk down, run up, walk down. If you have to walk up and run down and then you build up and you'll definitely begin to see it'll, it'll develop your quads it'll develop your glutes it'll lean out your calves it will give you some nice definition in your lower body and it'll get your metabolism going for for the for the day and it's really good for your heart and it's that stop and start that's really really healthy and really really effective um you know that's why you know people who do cycling it's that sprint and then coast and that sprint and then coast working your legs again it is amazing right um so wind sprints if you remember those when you were young running through the field walking back running through the field walking back anything along that line the stop start works really really well um i can't give you all the intricacies as to why i just know i've been doing it for years and it is fantastic so let's see so how many of you are doing the combination of weights and cardio just just say uh weights and cardio in, in in the in the chat in the comment section let me see uh who's doing what and i and I, as i continue on the next thing i think is really important is core right now your core is not just your abs it's that full band from your midsection so it is all around it is your your abs your obliques your lower back all those muscles in your back it's that full band your core helps you stay upright it prevents a whole bunch of difficulty so people who have lower back it's usually because their abs aren't as strong as they need to be um or their lower back the muscles in their lower back aren't as strong as they need to be so you want to work that whole band one of the best things for doing that really is yoga yeah, it is. It's a great because they work their core. There's a lot of balance moves. There's a lot of things that just really challenge um, your, your core section. So one of the things that you want to put in there is core, right? Uh, so anyone who works with me, we do we do core, a little bit of core every single day because we want to work that band. And when we're talking about core, we're talking about stuff for your lower back, stuff for your back, stuff for your lower abs, your upper abs, your obliques, the whole band, a lot of plank, right? You know, planking is popular now nowadays, all sorts of things. So Cindy's saying she does weights and cardio. Awesome, awesome. So you're you're on you're on the right track, All right? And we'll be talking about what Cindy's been up to uh, in a in a little bit. So so that's the thing right there. So you want to do car. Now the next thing you want to do is you also want to include stretching in your routine. Now when I talk about stretching, I am not talking about the five minutes or the three minutes of stretching before you start your weight workout or before you start your run or anything like that. That is a warm up. Um, it's to limber you up. I am talking about stretching that you find in yoga, stretching that you find in just doing a stretch class. So I stretch twice a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays, right? Now, when I was younger, I my coaches would make me stretch and they'd make me stretch before practice. They'd make me stretch for after practice. And I thought it was the most ridiculous thing, right? Now that I am a few years older, I have come to realize how important important stretching is for longevity. It is great for your joints. It is great for your balance. It is great for your range of motion. It is great for your, your, your flexibility. It is great for so many different things and it will keep you youthful, 
right? So what you want to do is you want to stretch. And so I recommend if you're not doing yoga, start some yoga. If you're not doing or, or just do a stretch class, there's some great stretch classes online. There's some great, great stretch classes that you can go to. I used to go to one um, when I was younger. It was an hour and he would stretch parts of us that I didn't even know needed to be stretched, but I would walk out of there feeling absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and it would make all the difference. Now, this is a cool thing. The more stretch you do, the more flexible you keep your body, the stronger you will become, the faster you will become. And why? Because it gives you more range in whatever you're doing. I remember when I was running track, our coach would have us do all these stretch exercises, and his goal was to elongate our stride. And so it wasn't about, and we would do weights and we would do cardio. We do all these things because it wasn't, he knew that speed was one thing, but the longer your stride, the faster you, you, you go. So he would make sure that we were well stretched. When I played soccer, they would stretch you because if you have a large range of motion, the further the ball goes when you make contact. And I know Cindy's a past soccer player herself. So she totally, totally understands that. So think about stretching can create and maintain your, your range of motion, your ability to touch back here, touch your toes, all those things. And they are vital when you, when you age. So notice we're talking cardio, we're talking strength training, we're talking core, we're talking uh, stretching. And the last thing I wanna talk about is plyometrics. And plyometrics is anything that has you jumping and moving from one foot to the other. Why is that so important? Because one of the key things we lose when we, as we age is our agility and our balance, right? And plyometrics, that movement from one foot to another, um, you know, dancing is a great plyometric exercise. Um, you know, a lot of sports will do, do that movement where you're stopping and starting. It is so key. So I would suggest that you get out of the gym and you get out of the structured workout and you go do, you go have some fun and do something where there's some stop, start, there's standing on one leg all, and just go out and do a sport and have some fun with it. Play, play a game of pickup soccer, pick up basketball, anything that has you testing your agility and your balance, right? Everything doesn't have to happen in a gym and it doesn't have to be oh so very structured. Go dancing. I know I was talking to Dale and we were talking about going dancing and just cutting the rug and having a good time. I'm game, right? Dancing is one of the best workouts you can do because it works almost every muscle in your body. So there's the piece. So let me see what's going on. Ah, so Malika says she started weights, but has not been doing cardio. Well, you want to get that cardio in. You want to get how many minutes of cardio per day for your health? How much weight lifting a day to speed definition? Ah, many definition. Okay, so let me talk about that. This is exactly where I want to go. So this is often a question, right? And this is what I have learned, and I'll and, and I'll tell you when I when I when I was younger, I used to spend a lot of time in the gym when I was competing. Oh my gosh, I lived in the gym. I was the proverbial gym rat. I'd go in the morning before school. I would go to school. I'd come back. I would work out um, in the afternoon. I'd go eat, and then I'd do my final workout in the evening. Who has time for that? Not me, right? Two is I don't have the attention span for that. So this is this to answer your question, Malika. This is what I do. I work out thirty minutes a day. Thirty minutes, five to six times a week. Truly, that's all I do, 30 minutes. But I call it the dirty 30. It's the dirty 30 because it is nonstop. And, and it is, it's a combination of cardio and weights and all sorts of stuff. So, my, so, twice, so I do two days of, it's kind of like a HIIT workout, but there's not, as much, there's not a lot of jumping and all that stuff because I'm protecting my little joints because, you know, I'm in my 50s. So, <laughs> so we want to take care of stuff. But so this is what it looks like. My rest are no longer more than 15 minutes between sets. And this is this is the trick, right? So I might do a set of weights and I might do I might do two two weight exercises. So I might do um 
bicep curls, and then go into push-ups. And then I will do something that, and it might be high knees for 30 seconds in between that. And my heart rate goes up. So what I'm wanting to do is, is to keep my body moving the whole time through the workout. I usually end up sweating, I'm breathing heavy, and I'm going between cardio, weights, plyo, cardio weights, plyo, cardio weights, plyo, all sorts of movements. And it is as nonstop as possible for 30 minutes. The only rest I have is enough to sip a, a sip of, of some water or whatever I'm drinking, right? And then I'm sp in, in enough time to pick up weights, put them down, have a sip, and I'm ready to go again, right? And so, and for me, it's always a combination of cardio and weights. I never just go running on the spot. So it may be that my cardio for the day might be I'm going to be in between weights, I'm going to be jumping. I might be doing burpees. It's any kind of movement that is nonstop that gets your heart rate up. And rather than running, I like to do all the stuff that you did when you were young. Because when we were young, our, our, our cardio was high because we were doing all sorts of things. So running on the spot, burpees, squatting and jumping up in the air, whatever it is from side to side, all sorts of different things that challenge your big muscles. And I and challenge your big muscles. So sometimes you go like lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body, biceps, triceps, whatever it is. If you're doing a workout where like, for example, we did upper body in the morning this week, and, and we put some cardio in between each, each set. So two sets of upper body cardio, two sets of upper body cardio, right? Then we did two sets of lower body cardio, two sets of lower body cardio, all of that done in 30 minutes, nonstop for 30 minutes. And anyone who works out, I know Cin I see Cindy there, I see Taria there. We're wait, like, we're like, okay, how much time is left? We're on round number five. And it's like, oh my God, it's the last round. My legs are burning, my I'm breathing heavy, my biceps are sore. Um, that's kind of what, what, what I would recommend. Mix it up. The other thing I would recommend is not to do the same routine over and over and over again. So uh, in the morning the other day, we, we were doing a, we did a 10 week rotation of one type of workout. Then I totally switched it up and everybody was like, oh my God, this is so hard. And it wasn't actually harder than what we were doing. It was just the mind said, oh my God, this is different. It had a little bit more cardio, but it actually wasn't as hard as the one before. And it was actually shorter, but because it changed and our muscles were moving in a different way, it seemed harder, right? So this is the thing. Like anything else, your muscles will get bored. Your body will get bored with doing the same routine over and over and over again. So what you want to do is you want to change it up. It's almost like you want to surprise your body. That's why we go from, from weights to cardio. Um, that's why we'll do one routine for a period of time. When we finish that, then we'll switch into another routine. We'll do ones that have higher cardio and lower weights, low, higher weights, lower cardio. But we're always getting those cardio and, and stuff in there. 30 minutes seems to be the ideal time. And it's non-stop for 30 minutes. You want to be tired. You want to be sweating. You want to be actually at the end, like coming to the last five minutes of the 30 minutes. You're like wishing and praying for it to be done. Now, why 30 minutes? Because I'm busy. You're busy. I can do it. Now, my goal, my, my, my bottom is 15 minutes. If I don't, if I'm on the go, I will do 15 minutes hard, dirty, quick, and get her done. My top is, is 30 to 35. That's kind of how I do it. <laughs> yeah, Cindy's saying, I feel my legs already from this morning. I hear you, girl. That one was that was challenging. Right. So you want you want to keep it moving and you want to you want to stir it up. Your goal is for your body not to get accustomed. Right. It's almost like you're keeping your body um, moving. Ah, I Wow. Got it. Thanks. Makes sense. Scary, but makes sense. It does. So let's address scary. Thank you for your comments, uh, Malika, because you're totally guiding this live and I love it. So let's talk about scary. 
So Cindy's on and Cindy, feel free to comment. I'm going to shout her out because Cindy is down, I think between 25 and 30 pounds. She's looking amazing. And uh, Cindy had gone through a challenging time where she just wasn't working out. And then she decided to, to get back into working out. And C Cindy's a former athlete, a uh, soccer player, former runner. Um, when we were young, we used to run together. Girlfriend can run. I don't like to run. She runs distance. She used to run distance. I would just do it because she, you know, I do what, what we did together. So, but that's not my thing. But she used to run. So she's a former athlete in great shape. But some stuff happened, and she and she and she hadn't had an opportunity. So you know when you get out of the habit, because this is what I want you guys to really get is when we're talking about health, fitness, and wellness. We're not talking about changing you. Remember that. You are perfect exactly the way you are. We're talking about improving your habits around your health, your fitness, and your wellness, right? Just maximizing, maximizing those habits and ensuring that you're, you're doing those habits that will move you in the direction you want to go. So Cindy's habits have kind of let go when she was out. She was out of the habit of working out. She's out of the habit of eating the way she was accustomed to. So it was just to reignite it. So this was the thing. And I, I truly believe in changing one thing at a time so that the brain doesn't freak out. And in the way, same way Courtney said, that's scary. Oh my gosh, your brain's already going, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. That is too much. That sounds hard. So I said to Cindy, start with, <laughs> yeah, muscle has memory. Absolutely. So I said to Cindy, start with seven minutes, seven minutes. Now you may be thinking, why would I start working out with Cindy? Yeah, Jackie's like, yay, Cindy, absolutely. Why would I work out for seven minutes? This is the thing. Cindy actually went and found a workout video that was five minutes and she did five minutes for like two weeks, right? This is why. See, the same way Malika said, oh my gosh, this is scary. Her mind's already starting to take her out of the game. Right. And her mind's already thinking, this is hard. I'm going to be sore. I'm not going to like this. No way. I'm not doing it. So rather than make it scary, what we do is we start you on this thing called the gradient. So when I say seven minutes, your mind goes, seven minutes? Are you kidding me? What's going to happen in seven minutes? What's going to happen is you're going to start to build the habit. That's really what's going to happen. Right. And we do the same thing. So you might be doing push-ups, sit-ups, squats, run on the spot. Do that all in within a minute, so 15, 15, 15, 15, and then rest for 15, start again. And you get your five minutes done. Do that for your first week so that your mind goes, that's not so bad. And two weeks later, you go 10 minutes and you increase the workout. And your mind goes, oh, I can do two minutes more, three minutes more. I've been doing seven minutes. The next week you do maybe 15 or 12 and you just build it up. Now, Cindy is doing 30 minutes and she's rocking it. She's killing it. And her mind is saying, no problem. We got this. Why? Because we didn't go anything extreme. So yeah, mental bribery. I can do that. Absolutely. Because what you want is you want your mind to go, I'm in. I'm in. I can do that. The soon as we go to these extremes and we start something that's so massive, first of all, your mind freaks out. And then the next morning, when you think someone has lowered the toilet seat, your body freaks out and then your mind freaks out more. And then you're like, yeah, we don't want to do this. Right. So you want to start so that the, the, the soreness is a little bit, you feel it, you know, you've moved your body, but it's not so extreme that it scares you. All right. So that's the way you do it. And you build up to those 30 minutes and you build up an intensity because this is the other thing I tell people, if you commit it to five minutes, complete, right? Keep moving for five minutes. I don't care if you're marching on the spot. Right. And then when you can get through the five minutes without stopping, go to the next level, go to go to your seven then go to your 10. But the thing is, is to complete because there's something in the mind about completion. Right. It just feels good. And, and really what we're talking about is everybody wants to win around their health. So my goal is to set you up to win. 
That's really what we're up to. We're just setting you up to win, right? And it's a little bit, little bit at a time. So that's that's kind of the thing. Now, now let's talk about supporting, right? Because I see so many people, they're at the gym, they're hammering it out, they're, and they might be doing all the right things, but they're they're ruining their hard work in the kitchen, right? And and in order for muscle to grow, in order for your body to lean out, that part happens in the kitchen. You see, when you're working out, all you're doing is tearing down your muscles and challenging it. In the kitchen, you're giving your body the nutrition so that it can build back up. So it's not, and it's not depleting your food. <laughs> the rookie has been looking for you. I like that, right? It's not depleting your food. It's actually eating an abundant amount of the right food at the right time. That is truly what it is. So anybody who's worked with me when they get their diet and Cindy and Jackie, you can attest to this. Um, they're like, I'm not going to lose weight on all this food. And I'm like, yes, you are. Cause we're going to feed your metabolism, the right food. We're going to rev it up. And we are going to allow your body to begin to do what the body naturally does when it's fueled the right way. So all the benefits that you're looking for, you build it in your workouts, but you nourish it in the kitchen. And it's the new, putting the right nutrition in your body that gives your body the building blocks. Now, I want to really make sure that you guys get this. Notice I'm not saying diet. I'm talking nutrition because I believe in abundance an abundance of nutrition to fuel your body, fuel it with the right food so you're not hungry, you're not frustrated, you're not deprived, you're not depleted, and you're also not feeling like you can never ever have the things you love, right? Yeah, you get to still eat, Malika, you do, totally, right? So we wanna set it up so that we figure out what, how much your body needs for food, fuel, what your body needs to, for nourishment. And when we get that balance, your body will, will, will release body, body fat. Now, this is the thing. If you do something so extreme that you're waiting to get off, you're never going to, you're never going to stick to it. So you'll be doing the yo-yo. Cindy, Jack, Jackie has been down. How many pounds, Jackie? Put it, put it in, in the thing. But Jackie has been down uh, her weight for two years right and the key thing we did it in such a way that she didn't feel deprived she actually didn't even notice that the weight was coming off she was just doing her routine and jackie was actually she started with just walking doing her routine and the weight was coming off so the other thing is to really think of how do i nourish my body so that I can win. Not how do I starve my body, but how do I nourish my body so that I'm feeling satiated, I'm feeling content, I'm feeling, oh, Jackie, see, 35 pounds, and she's kept that for, for two years. Now, Jackie is Mama J. She's a baker. So that speaks volumes, because if you can bake those beautiful cakes and keep down 30, 35 pounds and look amazing, you know we're doing something right, right? So that's what's ha that's what's happening. The final thing I want to talk to you about in this whole regime is rest, right? And the quickest way to aid your body or or challenge your body so that it breaks down and you get sick is not to get the appropriate amount of rest. So equally as important as what you do when you work out. And what you nourish your body is how you rest your body. So it's the ideal number of seven to eight hours. And why that's so important is when you put your food in your body, so you break your muscle down, right? You break it down in the gym. So think of it, your body, your muscles being broken down and then you nourish it so that your body can build it up. And because you've broken it down, your body's going to build it up stronger so that the next time it's hoping it won't break down as much and then it builds it up stronger. So every time you work it out, it builds, it breaks it down, builds it up, breaks it down. But the building up happens in the kitchen, giving it the right nutrition. But your body grows, heals and recovers when you're sleeping, right? That's why you'll see people that overtrain and they overtrain. That means they're going at it, going at it, going at it. And they're not seeing results because they're not giving their body enough rest.
That's why I don't recommend working out seven days a week. I like five and we do one day where it's just stretching. It's relaxing, right? Welcome, Sarita. Great to have you. Sarita's just started her journey and she's feeling good, looking good. Congratulations. And, and yeah, so it's, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole thing, right? So your rest and your sleep is equally as important. And I think the final thing is your mindset. Your mindset is so key. And I think it's going into this within a mindset of abundance and nourishment, not deprivation and depletion. It's going into it with a mindset of not all or nothing, but that you are going to fall off and get back on and fall off and get back on because you're developing some new habits. It's a mindset of 80-20 because there's a little girl or a little guy inside you that likes cake, that likes ice cream, that likes all sorts of things. So I have a I have a desire for Mama J's carrot cake. She knows that. When carrot cake shows up, this little girl, it can't say no. It's just that's just how the way that's just how it works. But the thing is. 80% of the week, probably 90% of the week, I'm right on point with my program. So that 10% of the time when I feed my my inner child and I just eat the things I love, it's okay. Cindy's is wine, right? She loves her wine on Friday nights and she's like clean all week so she can have her wine and whatever she has going with her wine. And she's continuing to come down and she's in between that 25 and 30 pounds. And it's been a while now. It's a gradual thing. So your mindset is really key. You want to be, you want to, you want to understand that we're going on a journey, right? And this is not a journey with a destination. This is a journey and you get to, you get to one level and you go, what's my next goal? You get to the next level. What's my next goal? You get to the next level. The reason my weight has been pretty well the same for the past 20 some years is because I always have a health goal. And I will admit that there was a period in my career where things got a little crazy and I neglected me and, and I went underweight and I had to build and build myself up. But the thing is, is I understand that my health is a journey. Hi, Nicholas. Right. And so that's really what it is. So let's see what everybody's saying here. Let's see. Right. Jackie's loving that 80, 20 rule. Um, yeah, yeah. Jackie's the baker. Baking and losing weight go go hand in hand, and um, and she's been doing it for the past two years. She looks fantastic. If you check check out her page, she looks absolutely amazing, right? Um, Malika, Malika, this is this is the secret way to do it. And I'll tell you, I'm all about making things joyful. If it's not fun, I'm not going to do it, right? If, if I don't, if I can't maintain it, it's not po no point in doing it in the first place. So the way our programs are designed is so that you can win. And, and, you know, and we have a turnkey system for nutrition because I understand that how you nourish your body is the secret. And it's often the disconnect that people have. They don't know what's the combination of workout. They don't know how to nourish their body. Those are the key things. And I think the mindset is the other thing because they look at it the wrong way. The last thing I will say to you, you know, as we wrap, right, is that your health is a foundation for everything you do, every single thing. And I love working with entrepreneurial men and women. I love working with those hard working, overproducing, ride to die, get it done, first to arrive, last to leave, bottom liner, uh, men and women. Those are people who you, you know you can count on because because they're they're busy, they get things done, right? Ah, uh, Sarita feels fabulous today. I'm applauding you. You're making me feel good, girlfriend. I love it. I'm going to interview you because I'm so excited for this journey for you. So I like to work with the, the Saritas in the world, the Jackies, those people who are overproducers, right? And the reason why is because those people tend to put their health on the back burner because they're so busy with their heart of service serving the rest of the world. But the key thing is they need to put themselves first. So, so the first thing, anyone who works with me, the first person you serve every day is you. You fill your cup up first so you can go out into your day from an abundant place, ready to serve from a full cup, right? And actually, if you're in my world, you serve from, you, from your saucer. 
So your cup is always full. And this is a philosophy I want you to think about. 30 minutes a day filling your cup. 30 minutes a day filling your cup. Um, doing some meditation for another 30. Doing pour, Pouring into your mind by doing some reading for another 30. We have a little routine. It takes about a, 90 minutes to an hour. Hour, hour to 90 minutes um, each day. We go into the world full. We go into the world ready to serve um, from this abundant place because self-care came first, right? That's the philosophy we roll with. So this is what I'm going to leave you with. If this was a value to you and you want to walk with us, whether it would be part of the 6 a.m. club, right? Um, we work out 6 o'clock in the morning via Zoom. You can come and join us. We have fun. Um, you start where you start. You go as long as you can. You just do what you do and you and you build up. So we have that 6 a.m. workout going on. We're, we're going to be doing a mastermind and we're going to be talking about mindset, uh, mindset for business, mindset for relationships, mindset for life. Um, you know, I, I lead a mastermind that is rocking. So I'm going to give those of you a taste of what that experience is like. So if you want to, if you're interested in the 6 a.m. club, you're interested in the mastermind, um, put challenge in the comment section. That way we know you're interested. We will make sure and connect with you. We will be doing the mastermind in the, within the next week or so. So we'll send you out a questionnaire to get to answer so we understand why you're coming and what you're coming for. If you're coming to the 6 a.m., I want to definitely connect with you to set you up for success. And uh, and if you're registering this week, we got some great promotions and bonuses happening. Um, so if you put challenge in the comment section, I will definitely be connecting with you. Uh, so this is, you know, the answer. Cardio or strength training, I'll tell you it's about both and a lot more. Your health, my health is a combination. It is a lifelong journey. It is designed to build you up. It happens from this abundant place and it leaves you feeling and looking fantastic. That's why my brand is get fit, find your fabulous and live a deeply fulfilled life, right? Physical fitness, emotional fitness, spiritual fitness, financial fitness. It is foundational for our dreams, our desires, our goals. So um, Sarita, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. I just want to give a shout out to Cindy, who is, you know, on her journey, working out five, six days a week. That was 30 minutes. Congratulations, because she started at five and she's rocking it. Miss Mama J, who is down 35 pounds, has been has kept it off for uh for two years now, now she's picking up weights and, and building and doing her cardio and she's in the jam with us in the morning. And I know there was Taria who jumped on early. Taria has recently joined us. She is a trooper. She's there in the morning. She's, she's building up and doing her 30 minutes. And she's telling me she's already seeing, she's already seeing some definition. Uh, Cindy's saying, loving it. And, and then, of course, recently, Sarita has joined us. And she's not able to work out in the morning, but she's in it with us in the morning in spirit. We're with her throughout the day. We're coaching, cheering her on, and just making sure that she gets the results she knows uh, she deserves. And Malika, I would love to have a conversation with you. If, if you are on a health journey and you need some support, put challenge in the comment section. I will reach out to you and connect with you and set a time and we can chat and we can get you on the way to where you want to go um, and getting the results just like Jackie, Cindy, Sarita, Taria, myself, and hundreds of people who walk with us. Everyone, have a fantastic week. Uh, be gentle with yourself. And remember, fill your cup up first. And, uh, and if, if, this, if this live blessed you, please make sure and share it with five people. Touch five lives because knowledge is only power, one when we use it, but when we serve others with it. And that means we share it. All right. So take care, everyone. I will see you back here next week with a new topic, another mindset mastery topic. 
and we'll be going back to mindset. So we did our health, wellness, and fitness mastery. We'll be going back to, to mindset. And then later on this month, we'll be doing communication mastery. So everyone take care and I will talk to you soon. Blessings. Bye-bye.